Hey guys, it's me again, Orange Slayer What If. Where I last left off is... Well, let's see. Again, another recap, let's see. He got taken as a slave. He has a... Some... He has a fiancé. He has two sisters. And their names are... Rose... And Quartz. I see what the guy did there. Rose Quartz, Steven Universe. But deal with it. I'll deal with it. And Integra, like the one guy imposed the name Integra, I actually did like the name, so that'll be the name of his fiance. Integra will be her name. And the mother will just be referred to as Mom. Her mother. And let's see, he has nine fights to go until he gets another cloak thing. He uses two axes and everything. Anything else I need to do? <laughs> no. So, where I will start off is in a training hall. Because, like, uh, if you don't know, I'm trying to get this similar to the World Eater, the World Eaters, or in this case, the Warhounds. Because I've always liked the name of the Warhounds instead of the World Eaters. If you do not know who world the World Eaters are, if you look up 40k World Eaters, you should pretty much find everything you need to know. But for a short summary, they were a Space Marine Legion that specialized in, ha in melee combat and were known for killing entire pop like s percentage of entire planet's population. For instance, one time they wiped out 99% of a population, I'm pretty sure, leaving only a single family of a f husband, a mother, and their daughter. That's... I'm not sure how correct that is, but yeah. That's when they were the World Eaters. Before they were known as the Warhounds. So I'll be trying to get the Warhounds instead of the World Eaters. But I digress. So what's happening right now is that Deku is tra in the training hall training with some of the Gladiators. Like they just sort of par split off into groups trained that way. With Bell's size... He actually tries to help the other smaller gladiators to like fend off like giant size and how to d get them. And one of the gladiator trainers has Bell doing this. So as Bell's like taking his two training axes, he's swinging them and constantly fighting like and just keeps on like knocking these guys over. He's like, see, you guys keep on getting knocked over. You need to build up tons of muscle to combat this muscle so instead of being giant hulking f giant moles of flesh you need to be nimble pieces of flesh you see what I mean enough to withstand an attack but enough to move out of the way very quickly don't have the advantage this guy has as he like pats Bell on the shoulder pats Bell on the arm Bell's like hmm like gives like a sort of hmm Oh, sorry. Oh. And he's like, as for you, big guy, what you'll need to do is learn an actual fighting style. This whole swinging the axes is good for the early things, but you're going to have to learn more skills the longer you fight. Because the longer you fight, the harder they're going to put it against you. You thought fighting those three hammer dudes was difficult? He's like, no. Well, if you had, then I would have told you you need to train. But you did use some your head there for a minute. You didn't just bash your way through them like you normally would. Guaranteed you kind of bashed them, but you kind of had the advantage there. In the sense that one of them rushed at you, the other two were just swinging. So you gotta use that head of yours in a fight. So as Bell gets training and such, and proper like fighting styles... There's not a lot that, like, comes... There's no real fighting style that involves two axes or... There's, like, one with a giant axe. And, like I said, he uses the halberd. But I'll say this halberd has a giant axe head as well. Instead of, like, a normal tiny one, it has a giant one. So as Bell is getting the training for this, the... No, uh, what was it? Dang it. I'm trying to hear, like... Stop trying to yawn. Bell and them have that going on. As he, like, trains with it. And he becomes one of the best. Like, in training, he's nigh unbeatable. 
Like, it takes, like, two instructors to try and take him down. But even then, that's a... Like, he, they don't always win. It's like, the top five put together could possibly we'll take him down pretty quickly. But if it's, like, the fifth and fourth, it's going to take a while. Four, fourth and third is going to take a little while as well. But with, like, the third and second, it's going to take a little bit less. With the first and second, it's going to be done pretty quickly. So, as that gets done... Uh, uh, this takes a span over a week, and Bell has gotten into two more... F two weeks, and Bell has gotten to sp two more fights in the span of this time. So now he has only seven fights away until he can get a new thing. And he's still winning bets, getting known. And he still talks to his sister, or mother, depending on which sister. Either his fiance, one of the sisters, or his mother that comes down with the food. Because they're typically busy up there, cleaning. And such. Uh. So as they get their jobs squared away, Belle continues to... Sort of get people happy with the fight pits. This next fight will be a team fight. It will be a, and they'll be bringing in some other fight pit members from another team. It'll be a twenty on twenty pit fight. This is a special one, so they get some of the best ones in there and throw them at each other essentially. And they move to like a bigger thing or out in the field with tons of guards and like the slave collars still on them. As Bell's, like, taken from his cell to, like, participate, his sisters and such are still left at the normal pits. So as they get, as they, Bell gets his armor, and Bell has acquired a bit more armor, so he doesn't just have the waist cloth and the arm guards and the shoulder pads. He actually has the two shoulder pads, leg armor, and a chest piece, sort of. Like a very light chest piece. So it isn't like chainmail and everything, just very light. So as he's going to be... He's like one of the ones up front into the battle. They split off into groups of five, so it's four groups versus four. And as Bell and them, like... Bell isn't put in charge, he's put under one of the trainers. <sighs> as he continues to fight, Bell is like... Bell and his team like move up and then just smash through like one of the other teams instantly. Bell is actually using his giant axe halberd. His giant axe like halberd. And now I know a halberd is an axe, but it's more the axe is more pronounced. Like you'd see in fancy. So as he swings that, he crushes through several of them. And using the, uh, the spike at the end of it, he actually sort of impales a few guys, raising them up, and then sort of bringing them down. He's one of the heavy hitters in this. As they finish cutting through the rest of the forces, as they get finished cutting through rest, the rest of the slave pits, they get done, and it was like, And the pit... The slay the pit fighters from Darigs succeed again, and the pit slave pits from Barshuk, Barshuk, yep, Barshuk have been defeated once again. Claim your rest or whatever, I guess, and they're transported back from the slave pits. The slave owner of that of Deku's pits is very happy. The one from the other place isn't very happy, calling it, saying it's kind of how it's unfair that he always gets the good slaves. He's closer, so he always gets to like get a hold of the best slave pit, the pit fighters, before anyone else can. And he's like, "Oh, why don't you bring out your best and have them fight my a warrior of my choosing?" He's like, "Fine, all right." And he yells for his like personal pit fighter and his champion to come out it's he's very big he's like the same size as bell and he uses like a a giant 
I don't know, a giant... I'm trying to think of a good weapon. But I'll just say he uses, like, a giant, a giant mace and a shield. No, a cleaver, a giant cleaver with a shield. And he's decked head to toe in armor and such. And then his slave fighter says, And my champion will be... Ah, the biggest one. So we... Bell is like told that he's getting sent in there again. And Bell is like... <sighs> he's like... <sighs> As he puts down his giant axe, he goes over and picks up his two smaller axes. So as he like skits limbered up. Oh, looks like we got surprising events, folks. It's, let's say it's the Butcher versus, as they like talk of it, like, what's his name? We don't have a name. Of uh, the double axe, dual axe, or, oh. Uh, yeah, double axe. We he has not he's fairly new, but he's been making way. So as Bell comes to blows with this giant dude, he like slashes and Bell cuts not straight through but clashes with his so axe and he's like s sorta swinging, hitting his shield and like trying and it actually lands kind of deep and this shield is not is like been used so long that's sort of falling apart and when bell swings a couple of times he breaks it completely as it shatters he one now like rushes forward and swings right to the guy's side this guy actually before he can get it completely he stops it like midway then he swings the cleaver down bell just barely manages to get his axe right there and it sort of catches the blade Bell manages to like sort of not hook it on. He just is holding it like Ugh. and so it's like then thrown back. The guy's clutching his side so he has like rushes with his cleaver swinging it like throwing blood in Bell's face and he has a helmet on at this point and the blood actually gets right to his eyes. He's like Ugh. just like and just covered like doesn't go to cover his eyes he's like oh trying to blink it out as he's blinking he gets a clear vision of when the guy lunges he comes swinging down the cleaver bell just swings very quickly like and manages to get this guy's hand as bell rushes over to finish the job he does it very quickly and brutally the crowd's like yeah that was great his pit his slave owner is very pleased. The other guy's angry that he's just lost his best person. And now this will be the fight number five. So he has five more fights to go. No, wait. Yeah, five. Five more fights to go. Yep. So as he returns, some of the other guys are like, Good job, Bill. And the, his slave owner says, well done now, go return. Return to the rest. He's like... <sighs> I said single-handedly, didn't I? He makes up... So... Uh, I'll say this, that he counts this as towards being the 10, since he actually did a majority... He, with his slashing and such, he actually did a large part of the killing, so... <sighs> He counted a lot of it towards Bell and such, so he granted it as his own. So as Bell leaves, he like takes off his helmet after the fight and just asks, and he sort of, when one of the, I guess, uh, servants or slaves come over asking if they need anything, he's like, I need something to clean up my eye. He's like, bring me a wet rag. Uh, she's like, yes. They're like, what's wrong? He threw his blood in my fat eyes. Ugh, I've been trying to blink it. Can't get rid of it. So as the slave girl returns, she's like, oh. and she's very small. It's like a child. He's like, thank you, little. He's like, thank you, little one. As he like rubs all the blood out of his eyes, he's like, Ugh. and 
<laughs> Belle's hair is kind of grown out at this point. So instead of just like a nice short hair, he's grown a like a nice little white head of hair. And his red eyes still piercing. His skin's kind of darker, I would say, in this with like the scar marks on his face. He's like, thank you, as he rubs it off. Ugh. So as they set in for the long trip back, Bell's like giving him special food and such since he did sort of bring victory to his slave master. So as he eats some more meat, maybe leftovers, but still, he's like, okay, well, as it was like having dinner with his daughter and his wife, he's like, how would you like to fight? As the uh, servants were about to get rid of all the, throw the food away, he's like, hold it. Send it down to the, to the pit fighters. They'll enjoy it. So as the rest of the leftovers come down, some of the pit fighters are like, hey, look. And there, as they walk by, he's like, uh, you were the ones who fought in today's match, yes? He's like, yeah, we were. So, and as Bell's brought, like, the biggest plate, not, like, the biggest amount of meat, she's like, uh, the slave owner, the master says, thanks for winning. And that he's five more to go. So as he just nods and grunts, he just goes, he just sort of takes some meat and eats. So as he continues on with his life, or his days, they return to the pit and such, and he goes back into his own little cell. It's not, he doesn't really have anyone else there. He just has his own personal thing that he sits in and waits for time for him to either go train or to fight while talking to his sister or wife or fiance while they come down. So as he's sitting there, his sister or wife doesn't come down tonight, but he does ask, uh, how's Rose, Quartz, and Integra? Have you heard these names? She's like, uh, yes. Tell him I said hi. As that happens, she goes upstairs and she tells him that he said hi. So, as he's just waiting, he gets... It's another week that passes, and he's sent back out again. Time and time, like two, three times this time, he's sent into to fight another animal. But this time, it's a lion, and he takes his giant axe. So as he gets out there, it's a giant, sort of Komodo dragon-like creature. He's like, oh, well, make it a, just the two tigers. So as he has his staff, he's just like staying in like at the ready. He doesn't let them get behind him. Because I'm pretty sure that's the thing is that if you keep your eyes on a tiger or any of those big cats... They will not try to jump on you, that if you keep your eyes on them, that they will stay put. But when you take your eyes off them, that's when they start to go attack. So he's always, like, stepping back and forth. And I'll say he's, go to, he's gone fighting against, like, mount, like jaguars and such. Or, what are they, panthers? Cougars? One of the two. So he always makes sure his back is face. He's... He's, both of them are in front of him. Then they charge forward after get, losing patience, sort of. So as they rush forward, Bell takes his act, takes his thing, holds it up, and then smashes, hits one to the side with his, drive his axe. And as the other one lunges forward, Bell sort of gets the axe at an angle and just, uh, sort of guts it, in a way. Just so it's falling on the ground and finishes off the job very quickly. Because he doesn't like hearing animals suffer. So as the next one gets back up, more ferocious. And it's enraged at this point. So it's fighting ferociously. As it dodges Bell's attack, it gets up and claws him on the face. Again. Well, not the face. Actually, on the... In the chest, again. So instead of just having a, a patch of scars there, he has now one on his side of his ribs. So as he like gets done and just swings the axe very quickly, it catches the tiger right in the head. 
quickly but mercifully ending it. As he like looks at his side and just holds it, and so he starts going back to the arena, to the pits. Go back to the pit, slave. He's like, all right, who's next matchup? The slave pit, the pit owner is extremely impressed. The bear thing was cool. And fighting those three guys were impressive to him as well. But he knows true challenges are yet to appear. So as Bell and them get ready, he just sits he just gets his wounds attended to, then returns to the pits, getting himself sewn up again. Just sitting there. This time he's able to go, like, work out, I guess, for a bit. And so he gets to the pit. People see his injury, and he just comes, starts swinging his, like, giant axe, and then after a little while, switches to his two smaller axes. He goes, <laughs> Like getting into the rhythm and trying to develop his own personal fighting style, which he's getting close to it. It's more like just an unending assault and taking very quick but strong breaths so that way he doesn't go get out of air. And so that's how he's developed his fighting style. And another week goes by without him having to go fight another thing. <sighs> Still talking with his fiance and such. Just day in day out stuff. Then it's a uh, sort of. More pit fighters against more pit fighters. So he's sized up against. One of the trainers actually. He doesn't want to fight him. And Bell. Knows this but this guy's fully ready to kill Bell. So. And Bell actually was talked to this about that. Trainers will sometimes be assigned to fight slaves, because after all, they are still slaves themselves, or pit fighters themselves. So they must be ready to kill each of the trainers, so they must not get attached. But if you strike down a trainer, you will have to take up his, his or her position as a pit fighter. So as Bell understands this, he gets ready. And this will be the second best trainer actually so as he like sizes him up bell gives like a warrior salute and such uh oh sorry so as they enter another long battle this guy is like bobbing and weaving trying to get nice little cuts in bell but bell is always keeping his leg keeping like his skin and such like out of reach of this guy's sword I'll say it's similar to like a rapier. So as he keeps on trying to stab him and slash him, Bell just keeps on moving forward. Then when Bell sees the chance, he gr he gets the sword hooked on his axe and then snaps the sword straight off. This dude looking at him, he's like, oh. going behind him and pulling out two daggers. Bell rushes forward, faints an attack from a like with his left hand from above and then co immediately comes in with his right axe immediately catching him off guard and just slicing him in two he respectfully put the remains back together and then just like left it there not doing anything else going back to things and he remained unscathed because of this because like I said he's become one of the best fighters and it takes the Trainers working in teams to take him down. So as he deals with that, he sort of acknowledged as the new trainer, and as some of, since there are a lot of casualties when it comes to fighting in the slave pits, and I'll say this is a massive empire, and they do their things. Bell is all, and since there's constantly more slaves, either being born, being made. Or being taken. There's constant supplies of more slaves to fight in the pits. But the only times when casualties for the slaves really happen. Is when there's more slaves against slaves. Or slaves against a giant beast. So as Bell and them get like. And this is a. Uh, 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 another. 
victory. That's seven, I believe. Seven. Or is that six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Yep. Six fights. Two, three. Sorry, you are having me hear me recount this. Two, three. No, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six of them. So now he'll have to continue. And he takes to the part of training the newer slaves, so they send them in there, so, like, to train the newer ones, so he gets the hang of it. So, he actually takes really well to training the slave fighters, or the new slave recruits. So as he trains them into, like, the proper way of stabbing, holding up a shield and such, holding weapons and proper way to slash, and keep, like, constant breath in and out, and also has him doing physical exercises. As that's happening, he's called away to do his training. He's like, pair off and train. This is, like, a f two weeks later. So he goes up to the arena again. This time, he's earned some more armor, and it's a heavier set of chest piece excluding the helmets and this will be the seventh fight he has to win this no oh, yeah actually this will be the eighth fight because i completely forgot about the tigers oh well oops so as he goes and does does not and goes and fights the well let's see hmm i'll say he fights some a, a type of vampire that is known to the area as a ghoul. And it's like a monstrous fight. And since the only way to really kill it is with silver, as far as I know, because I'm pretty sure that's a big thing, is that silver is what you use to kill the majority of monsters. So he has been granted two silver axes, or... <sighs> <sighs> One giant axe. He decides to go with the giant axe. He switches it up. So he gets ready. Swinging it around a bit like... <sighs> and so he enters the arena like... And it's like... Hmm. Oh, it looks like our friend is back. And they just call him the giant for now. Or the berserking giant... The berserker giant... Or Giant Berserker, one of the two. And now he comes to fight this ghoul. It's like in a cage at the moment. So right now, it can't see anything but Bell. And this thing has been starved of any form of nourishment. So it's going to come at Bell like a feral beast. Because it is. So as it comes forth, biting, gnashing, and clawing to like try and rip out Bell's face... Bell's constantly on the back step of this one. He immediately, like, goes to swing the axe, but this thing, using its claws, bats it away like it's nothing. And so as he goes and rips out, not goes and rips out, but it actually ends up smash, like, taking off pieces of his armor to open up spots where it can claw and bite. But Bell is is expertly defending himself, keeping at bay and keeping back, while also taking stabbing shots at it and actually hitting it, the silver causing it to burn and sizzle as it rears back and gets away, like, sort of clawing and, like, trying to smash away the burning sound. This is when Bell presses the attack, takes his axe, and actually cuts off some of its fingers. It screams even more, entering a frenzy where it just comes and starts slashing and actually at one point grabs Bell, but thanks to like a weapon he has on hand, as it like brings it closer to bite him, he can't really swing the axe, so he takes out a knife and jams it right into the ghoul's eye. As it drops him and goes flailing about to try and remove the knife, Bell's axe was thrown quite a distance away and as he's thrown to he crawls back to it picking it back up and as he like swings it back like swings it around like doing a spin swing 
Since this thing has since removed the thing from its eye, he picks it back up and swings it, catching it right in the face. <sighs> but it ain't dead yet. Its face is just really messed up and kind of hanging off. So as its like face is hanging off, it comes back charging again and again, slashing, clawing, and biting. He manages to get the upper pan by stabbing it, and like after he like dodges real quick, and cutting off its left arm, and then like cutting off its left arm, then going like right into the leg, causing it to somewhat limp. As it's limping, he pushes the advantage, jumping on its back and slamming the axe right down the middle of the head, making it like split in two. As that happens, this thing isn't poofing because it's not from the dungeon. It's a flesh and blood creature. So as he gets done and jumps down, he's just... <sighs> and looking over himself... He really isn't injured aside from scrapes and bruises he's taken. He goes back over and reclaims his armor piece strapping it back on. And reclaiming the knife from where it had been tossed. And the and our t giant berserker has done it again folks. Let's see him later. As the thing is closed off. And I'll say Bell's been here for now six months. Six, seven months. There we go. And so he's gaining a reputation. <sighs> Ugh. And every now and then he'll be taken out to fight a personal and like once or twice now. So this will be his. The next fight will be the thing where he earns a, his like. And this his slave pit. His slave owner is a slave owner, but he's a man of his word, is what one of the things he takes pride in. So, after fighting a few of these rivaling slave owners, trying to move in on his territory, or steal his stock, quote-unquote, Bell sorts it out by fighting, like, ch challengers to this guy's thing. And people have taken to him, calling him the Hound, in a way. Ugh, sorry. Calling him the Hound, or some... Yeah, the Hound. And soon, like, later on, you know what I mean, what will happen. What will be referred to as. But he'll continue forward with his days. And the master and the slave owner says, Yeah, one more fight, my friend. And this will be your toughest fight yet. You thought that ghoul thing was tough? He sort of gives a laugh, saying, You have no idea. I'd like to see you in the pit, and this thing I'll give you permission to make out of your new cloak, in a way. So as Bell just sits there silently, whoa, and he as he like walks away, he's like, "Tell, tell Integra," I said, "Hi." As Bell note like gets up and like grabs onto a bar, he's like, "Don't worry, I won't do anything, nor when I aim my people, I'll see to it personally." So. You normally he wouldn't care about this, but since Bell is his prized slave at the moment, who uh, he will be t watching over his whole family is what he says. So you better keep winning. As he says this, he's like, "I understand." He speaks. Well, you'll enjoy this next fight, or if you die, well. I'll have no reason to keep them around. I wonder... Well... A friend of mine in a certain district has been looking for more. And your... Siblings and wife aren't easy on the eyes. Bell rushes to the bars, nearly like shaking him. He's like, now that's what I want to see out there. Remember, I'm a man of my word. Both ways. As he gives a devious smile, he walks away. Bell just sort of seething in his hatred. So as he's called, like a week, two weeks later, he's been training more people and such. He hasn't been in a fight. They finally get what Bell has been waiting for. He's like, the war, may the hound please report to the slave thing. As he's 
just walks there. The slave owner says he doesn't need a per escort. He'll know, because if he does try to run away, he knows the consequences. So as Bell gets to the thing, he takes up his uh, signature two axes. They are his axes, and they have blood on them. And they've become kind of greasy. So, to fix this, he's been trying to think of a way. And, like I said, he doesn't—he can't maintain the axes because he has nothing to maintain it with. So, he's just sort of had to sharpen them against stone and such. Not a wet stone, just normal stone that he's been able to get, get his hands on. As well as trying to clean it is just... A mess and such. So as he tries to clean the weapons and such, he just comes to realization it'll be easier to just switch them out. But the slave owner says these will be your weapons from now on. You will maintain them as well as not get rid of them. So as he remembers this, he decides to get, add chains to them. Yes, he's becoming a Angron basically without the butcher's nails. He'll have these and wrap them around his arms. Such. So, as that's done, he walks out. It's like, oh, the hound's out again, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what he fights. So as Bell doesn't try to make a show of it, he's just standing there, limbering up. And he has his full set of armor that he has in this. So, as he's just waiting there, sort of pacing back and forth... It's a giant box, like, about the size of the, of one of the, I don't know, like, two of the bears that he was, that one bear he fought, it's about the size of two of those. Yeah. So, as he gets there, they open the box, sort of, like, taking off the things, and in it is a giant salamander thing Komodo dragon like beast and he qu immediately chomps up the two guys that were like that had to destroy the box he immediately chomps them up after eating them it sets its sights on bell giving a massive roar the people are like whoa and they set up magical barriers so it won't like try to attack them bell is squaring off with this thing he just sort of gets up and starts pacing, sort of going to a circle, and this beat, and this monster understands this, so it's doing the exact same thing. Now, this may be difficult, but he, the things, it's very long and bulky, so, hmm, he'll have extra, and the pit owner says that this will be the guy, people's food, the slave's food tonight. And that's he'll be taking what he needs to make his new cloak. This thing is... Ah, sorry. This thing's skin is very... Well, I won't say it's bright red. It's actually like a very pale gray or white. So as it's like walking around it, it's, its skull will do nicely. So as Bell like finally finish pacing with this thing, they both charge at one another. This thing reaching down trying to snap Bell up in its jaws, Bell immediately dodges to his side and like uses his axe and cuts right into the mouth, causing this thing to howl in pain. It immediately takes his hand and smacks him, but as it does that, he immediately uses it to hook into the skin to climb up the beast somehow. He starts chomping away at the top of it, just like, roaring in a way. This thing immediately does a death roll, crushing him underneath its back. As he takes a second to recuperate, this thing gets done spinning. It takes its teeth and tries to bite him, but he immediately sort of dodges all the way, after it also smashes the ground a bit. He actually ends up cutting off one of the fingers. After, like, gets too close, he smashes his axes down into the ground, lopping off one of the fingers on this thing. It screams in pain again. And, like, this time just jumps and body slams him. He's like, Ugh! as that happens, 
he just sort of s barely able to move just starts using his axe and cuts his way into this thing sort of getting into it quite literally and immediately gets his way into the creature it feels his pain is just writh writhing around after getting into it and digging his way through its insides he manages to get to the like up its throat it feels it looks like it's like trying to choke him down but he's coming upwards he's like in the stomach area and such he's not in the stomachs otherwise he'd be dissolving by the stomach acid he actually just cuts some of the major organs and actually gets the heart and slams his axe into it immediately causing it to go go like <sighs> then immediately goes limp and falls over scratch that this thing will be massive he'll take the skin from it and such blah 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 as he cuts his way out, he's like, oh, 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 as the people are cheering, well done. So, as, like, a smaller version of this monster is brought to Bell, he's like, I told you, I'm a man of my word. You may use this to make another cloak, and it's big enough for Bell. So, he takes the, and it's like, show him to a way to the butchery. So as he gets there, he does what he did to the wolf that one time. And uses its remains to make him another cloak. This thing was kind of hairy. And also resembled a wolf. But it was just like white and kind of scaly in some features and such. Now I'm thinking of retconning that. But he just wears it. And it's like on his head again. So as he gets done with that, he returns to his thing wearing his new cloak. Yeah, that makes sense. It's very furry dragon looking thing. I don't know how to explain it. I'm trying to think of a way to explain it to you guys, but I really can't. But as his fiance... Integra comes down saying she saw his match and says he did very wonderful in that any other person would have been crushed by it. He's like, thank you, Integra. And I, and he sort of says, I promise you, I will get us out of here. Ugh. She's like, I know you will, Belle. But for now, let's just lay low and you fight in the fight pits. And I'll deal with everything out here. He's like. Alright. And he says, I love you. And she's like, I love you too. And as she walks away, the daughter of the slave owner comes down and says, Hello, Belle. And she's like, hmm. So we're looking him over. Hmm. wonder if Daddy would let me have you as my personal slave. He's just not answering. He's like, you hear me? Answer me. As he slams on the door, she's like, fine. I'll force you to answer me. As she starts doing the thing, he's like, oh. do you think Dad would let me have you as my personal slave? He's like, no. She's like, well, what makes you think that? I get everything you want. And he says this. I'm your father's best slave fight pit fighter he won't give me away even to you unless you gave him something far greater than his best pit fighter he says this quite clearly and some of the person and some of the slave pit guards hear this it's like <laughs> little princess is trying to get her way again as she hears this and walks over who are you calling and she starts chewing out the guards. As Bell just goes to fall asleep, he's like, too tired for this. Mm -mm. As he, like, sort of dozes off, she's like, hey. And just shocking thing, he's like, Argh. She says, I promise you this. I will get you to be mine. Whether Daddy likes it or not. He's like, that will be the day. 
And as this is done, I'll say it's been roughly eight months since he's gotten there. Becoming one of the best pit fighters there in a short amount of time. Some are saying he's a born fighter. And that he's probably one of the best pit fighters. Like in the top 20 of the pit fighters. That's ever been here. But hey there's a, a few, plenty of others who are better than him. As some of them say. So. Bell goes to sleep and has a nice dream. And then it turns into a nightmare very quickly. I'll explain what the dream is in the next episode. But for now, I hope you all have a nice day, nice night, nice life. Thank you all for watching my stuff. Regardless, bye.